All right, we are back at Lake Elsinore Casino, or the lake as it's referred to by the locals here, and we're in for our usual 300. First thing I know, we looked at an Ace Ace 9 3 rainbow. There's four limpers, the small blind checks to me, and I just decided to check. These are about the worst aces you're gonna get, and they're just not really gonna play that well post flop. So we check and see a flop six ways. Flop comes Jack 6 2 with two hearts. Small blind checks to me, I check, and everyone checks, so we're going to a turn. Turn brings a four of hearts and small blind checks, I check, middle position player bets 15, and when it comes back to me, I go ahead and fold. So I wanted to share this hand for a couple reasons. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna question why I didn't raise preflop. And I think it's very similar to another play I make, kind of same concept. You know, if you've watched previous videos, you've seen I've done the limp re-raise with my aces when I'm in early position. And the reason for that, especially with aces that are this bad, they're just not gonna play post-flop that well. So if you can get most of the money in pre-flop, it's gonna make your decisions a lot easier. So here we look down at king, queen, nine, eight, double suited in the cutoff. The middle position player makes a 20. We go ahead and call. Then the button and the big blind call, so we're going four ways to a flop. Flop comes king, queen, six, rainbow. When it checks to me, I wanna go ahead and bet big here. Uh, a lot of people are gonna have jack 10 in their range, so I wanna charge them the max for straight trust. So I go ahead and bet 75 and everyone folds, so we take it down. This is a hand I ended up folding within an orbit or two of the previous hand. I think having three wheel cards makes it a fold. So here we look down at ace, ace, queen, 10, single suited to the ace under the gun. Here we go ahead and make it 20. Three players behind call along with one of the blinds and we're going five ways to a flop. Flop comes jack, eight, six with two diamonds. And although I do have a gut shot, this flop is going to connect with a lot of the other players range a lot more than mine. Plus me not having any diamonds in my hand makes this a check. It actually checks around and we're going to a turn which brings the four of spades. When it checks to me, uh, again, I can't really do much here besides check with straight now available plus two flush draws that I don't have. One of the late position players bets 80, another player calls, I fold. Whoever brings a two of diamonds, one of the players ends up pushing, the other player ends up calling. It was nut flush for second nut flush. Uh, one of the players had nine ten as well, so it doesn't look like I was gonna be able to do anything to get either of them off their hand. I ended up folding this to a raise and a call. Um, I know it's double suited, it looks nice, but having two wheel cards in the hand is not really that great, so I ended up folding. So here we look down at ace, queen, queen, nine, single suited to the queen in a straddled pot in the cutoff. I go ahead and limp, the button limps, both the blinds call, straddler checks, we're going five ways to a flop. Flop comes 10, 8, 5, rainbow, and when it checks to me, I go ahead and check, button checks, and we're going to a turn. Turn brings a jack of hearts, and then the small blind goes ahead and pots it to $50. Everyone folds to me, and I gotta protect my hand against uh, flush draws, potential sets, so I go ahead and pot it to 200. The button thinks about it for a little bit, but eventually folds. The small blind calls for his extra $10, and we're going to a river. River brings a seven of diamonds, and we still have the nuts. We show our hand, and of course we're good, so we're taking it down. So here we look down at ace, queen, 10, three, double suited under the gun, and we go ahead limp. There's a couple limpers behind. The button goes ahead and makes a 25. I call, there's two callers, and we're going four ways to a flop. Flop comes king, nine, nine, rainbow. I check, the other players check behind, and we're going to a turn. Turn brings a king of hearts. I go ahead and check. C5 goes ahead and bets 35. The button calls, and I normally don't call when I could potentially be drawing dead. But in this case, with two pair on the board, I think it's unlikely that somebody has king nine. So I believe my flush draw and straight draw are still alive. So I go ahead and make the call as well. River brings an ace, and I go ahead and check. C5 checks, then the button bets 150. And don't think I could do anything here besides fold, which is what I do. And then seat five also folds, so we don't really get to see what the button had. We go a couple of orbits, mostly folding, until we look down at ace, jack, 10, seven, double suited in the small blind. There's an early position limp, late position raised to 15. I go ahead and call, the big blind calls, and the limper calls. So we're going four ways to a flop. Ball cups, king, jack, jack, with two clubs. I check. The big blind checks, middle position player checks, and the late position player checks. So we're going to a turn. Turn brings a five of diamonds, and I can't slow play anymore. I go ahead and lead out 45. Middle position player calls, and then the late position player goes ahead and raises it to 250. I'm trying to think of a hand I beat. I'm not coming up with too many. 
Um, he really plays this hand very similar to how most people would play pocket kings. I mean, he raised preflop. And then, of course, if he's in last position with kings full or even king jack, he's not going to bet. He's going to wait for someone to make a flush or a straight. And then when a five comes on the turn, which shouldn't really change much in the hand, he raises to 250. So, I don't know, I think for a little bit, but I eventually fold. Let me know what you think here in the hand. Unfortunately, the player behind also folded, so we don't get to see what he had. About an orbit later, we look down at king, queen, queen, nine, rainbow in a straddle pot. Under the gun limps, I go ahead and limp on the button. Both the blinds complete the straddle, and we're going five ways to a flop. Flop comes queen, seven, five with two hearts. The straddle order leads out for 40, under the gun calls, and I go ahead and push for my remaining 185. The straddler calls, under the gun then pushes for 250 more. The straddler ends up tanking for a while, but eventually does fold, so we're going heads up to a run out. Turn brings a jack of spades, then the river brings a six of diamonds. I turn over my hand and he tells me I'm good. He shows a enough flush draw with the gut shot. So we're taking it down. So after that set of queen's hand, we go about an hour and a half real time without really getting much. It also gets down to four handed and the game looks like it's about to break. So I decided to rack up. All right guys, just finished up. Uh, it was kind of a slower session, similar to a couple sessions ago. People were just in and out all day. PLO was kind of a revolving door into other games which is sometimes kind of frustrating. Uh, I mentioned a couple videos ago that one of my goals with the channel is to grow the game, which is definitely true. You know, part of the reason for that is because I think there is definitely a bigger edge in PLO compared to that of Hold'em. Uh, but also selfishly, I would love to be able to play every single day and have great action, multiple tables. Uh, whereas, you know, the game I play, it's pretty good usually, but it is sometimes hit or miss today. At the end, we got down to four handed, which I usually prefer to be at least five or six handed if it's gonna be a little shorter. So not too bad, uh, I was in the game for 300, I was out for 426, so small profit of 126. I would say assessing my play overall, I think I played pretty well. The two hands I won was the queens, uh, first one with the straight, then the bigger one was with the set, all in on the flop, and I ended up dodging his flush draw and straight draw. The one hand in question I could have played differently potentially was the ace-jack-10-7 double suited where I flop tripped, it checked around, I bet out, turn. He ended up raising me 250 and I don't know, I just didn't see how he was going to be bluffing there. So uh, let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like and subscribe button. If your viewing experience could have been better, let me know how down in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.